Uh, so good morning. Uh, welcome to the second week of this program. Uh, okay, at least there is a sizable number now. On the first day, we saw there is the hall was jam packed even before it was nine thirty, and we had to wait for the time to get to nine thirty. But today, I was a bit worried. Uh, I guess some of the people have gone, and some new people are coming. Welcome. So, so uh, one or two small announcements. One is that uh, uh, tomorrow's uh, afternoon talk by Ben McDonald has been cancelled for some reason. And uh, my co-organizer, Alexi, will give a talk, and I'll just uh, share the title and abstract later. And the other thing is Wednesday, uh, like previous Wednesday, we'll have another group photograph. And uh, without further ado, I want to invite uh, Professor Catherine Stange to chair this morning session. Is the mic right? OK, yeah. So, um, so I have the pleasure of introducing Pietro Corvaya, who will be giving the first lecture in a series on bounded generation of linear groups and Diophantine approximation. So thank you very much for this um, invitation to this uh, uh, prestigious conference. Um, I'm not really an expert in uh, geometric group theory, it's a risky then subgroups. Um, also on the first part of the conference, I learned something. And uh, the reason why I'm uh, lecturing here is that um, some problems about um, bounded generation are linked with Diophantine equations. And uh, since I work Diophantine equation, uh, together with my colleague, uh, Andrei Rapinchuk. Jim Boren. Sumner. We, we proved a new result on um, bounded generation, which has already been uh, quoted on the, the first half of, the, of this conference. And uh, my aim is uh, introducing the problem of bounded generation on uh, groups, and then proving, um, or at least giving an idea of, of the proof of that theorem. So uh, let's start with um, the definition a gamma is a group and we say that uh, gamma is a uh, boundedly generated if this set theoretic product of finitely many More explicitly, uh, this is gamma one, gamma n, gamma such that each element gamma and gamma is equal to an expression on the four gamma one to the a one, gamma n to the a n. For suitable integers. So it is a form, a stronger form of a, um, finite generation. And for abelian groups, it's just the same notion. And actually, it turns out that also for 
uh, nil potent groups, uh, bounded generation is equivalent to uh, finite generation. Uh, but in general, it's, um, it's different. And the, the first, uh, well, first remark is that this notation, this condition is stable uh, by on the quotients. So the quotient of a BG group is still BG. And also, um, Gamma admits admits a finite index BG subgroup then gamma is itself is boundedly generated. And also, it's stable under um, extensions. So, if we are gamma is the middle term of a short exit sequence, it's A is boundary generated and B boundary generated, then um, gamma also is boundary generated. And the first um, case to consider is the one of uh, three groups finitely generated three groups. So if uh, finitely generated three groups were boundedly generated, then by stability under quotients, all finitely generated uh, group would be boundedly generated. And there would be no mini course on boundary generated groups. So the, I must prove that Fn, the three groups are not boundary generated. And of course, the crucial case is F2, three group, two generator, which is a quotient of all the other um, Fn. So uh, crucial point is proving that this group is not boundary generated. And the idea is to observe that um, each symmetric group SN is the quotient of F2 because it's generated by uh, for instance, the transposition one, two, and the end cycle. And uh, of course, SN is uh, boundary generated because it's finite, but if F2 were boundary generated, if F2, the product gamma D, then for each N, we would have um, and every element in SN would be written, would be written in form. Of 
well, there, there exist gamma one, gamma D in SN such that for each gamma, we would have this, um, this expression. And of course the AI can be taken between zero and the order of um, gamma I is bounded by what I call M of N, this maximal order of an element in the symmetric group SN. So the idea is bounding uh, this number MN, and so uh, we bound the number of expression of this form, and it turns out that there are not enough over the old group SN. Now, um, MN can always be obtained as a product N1 and K of a certain K and certain number, natural numbers. Uh, let's say strictly positive, such that the sum uh, equals n. Uh, divide, um, well, I decomposing these joint cycles, and then the order, the order of the product is least common multiple of the length of the cycle. So in particular, it's less, it's at most the product of the cycle length. And now I have to estimate uh, this quantity, not knowing K. And this is done by uh, geometric arithmetic mean inequality. So I know that N1 and K one over k is less than n one plus n k over k, which is n over k. So I obtain that m n is bounded by n over k the k. And I have to estimate uh, this quantity in terms of n and independently of k. So we use a simple um, calculus. We set uh, k equals nx, where x is between 0 and 1. So um, forgetting about integrality. So this becomes equal to um, 1 over x to n x. So finally, logarithm m of n is bounded by n x logarithm 1 over x. So by this there exist x zero one such so that uh, this holds for every n there exists an x. And the maximum of this function x between zero and one are well, easily calculated is attained at the point where x is uh, 1 over e, and the maximum is 1 over e. So finally, log mn, the 
it's less than n over one. But on the other end, the number of elements of Sn under these assumptions is n would be less than um, each Ai has at most Mn possibility, so Mn to the D. So we obtain log n factorial less than D square um, E multiplied by M. On the other hand, it's easy to see that N factorial is larger than N log N minus N. Very weak form of a Stirling formula. This follows from the fact that exponential function calculated at a point n turns out to be larger than its nth term and this is this. so um, these two inequalities cannot hold uh, for larger n Second one is true, so it's the first one which holds. And so the theorem is proved. And it's perhaps the only full proof that I will give. Yes. Next theorem are harder to prove. Now, um, since we are interested mainly in linear groups, um, let's deduce consequence for um, linear groups. Let's say SL2 is now G. And it follows from the fact that S2 that contains as a subgroup of finite index a free group with two generators. For instance, um, this group can be proved to be free by, a, for instance, an application of a ping pong lemma, which was mentioned by Emmanuel Treillard. Well, so, um, so, so I said to that it's not bounded in any way. In uh, 1983, uh, Carter and Keller proved that. Um, SL uh, and Z is boundary generated for every N at least three. The proof is rather um, ingenious, ingenious. It makes use of Dirichlet theorem on, on arithmetic progressions. And uh, proves actually that it's boundly generated by elementary methods. By elementary methods, I mean metric um, arising in um, column or row uh, operations, so multiplying by elementary matrix on the left or on the right uh, you know, gives such a uh, effect. And 
Are the results for SLN? If we consider a ring of ring of integers. number field so uh, we have to have SL2 O snap and G when K is quadratic imaginary this means that the group of units is finite. And by a result of uh, um, Morgan, Pinchuk, and Suri, Turns out that this is the only case, so um, SL2O is boundly generated whenever O star is empty. And actually, here in this this result, we can also replace the integer by any ring of, of integers. Oh, uh, I can quote uh, two more results for um, for abstract groups. Well, first of all, a natural problem is asking whether problem for abstract groups. Uh, gamma finitely generated and solvable. Does it imply that gamma um, is boundly generated? I said that whenever it's nilpotent and finitely generated, it is boundary generated. So it's natural to consider this, this problem. And the answer is no. And for instance, there is um, a general result uh, by um, Iba. And uh, Seagal, a recent result that said if gamma is um, residually finite, and virtually solvable, Duly finite means that we have two distinct elements. There is a projection to a finite group having distinct images. Uh, then, uh, under this hypothesis, uh, gamma is boundly generated if and only if uh, gamma has finite rank. Uh, 
uh, if the definition of finite rank, rank uh, not a rank in the sense of algebraic group, if you are, you are an abstract group, this means uh, system R, natural number, such that every finite generated subgroup is generated No, every subgroup is generated by R. Okay, so, um, and there are examples with observable groups, not of finite rank. And, uh, and I'd like to, to show a show um, an example over um, uh, linear group by linear group I just mean a, a subgroup of some GLN A of uh, characteristic zero. Uh, which is uh, solvable. Finite generated. And not boundly generated, and actually uh, being uh, linear and finitely generated, it turns out that it is also uh, residually finite. So the finitely generated uh, linear group can be viewed as a subgroup of GLN. O, where O is a finitely generated ring. I mean, a finitely generated ring, there are lots of ideals, so one can do uh, quotients by these ideals and distinguish any two elements. And uh, the examples which I'll show now is um, similar to the Polycyclic? No. Uh, uh, finitely generated and not the BG. Uh, solvable. Here it's solvable, not polycyclic. And gamma is constructed in this way. Uh, we consider uh, an indeterminate X. And the ring of the round polynomials in X consider matrices of this form where I is an integer and A is an element of the ring. So this. Uh, Similar to the lamp lighter group, this also can be represented in a similar way. Uh, it's clearly solvable because uh, unipotent matrices for the abelian group x, x minus one. And the quotient is obtained by I. So it's an extension of two abelian groups. One is finitely generated and the other is not. And that's the reason why it, it might fail to have BG and actually it fails. And uh, I don't know if I 
maybe I'll give a, a sketch of the proof, but um, first I'd, I'd like to show that it enters in this, um, in this example because um, that I think this is not finitely generated. So gamma cannot have finite run. So applying um, Fieber Siegel theorem, it turns out that it, it's not BG. There is also um, another general result. Uh, due to a Suri and uh, um, Nikolov. It concerns a rat product. So if you have a rat product of two groups, and then gamma is boundly generated if and only if A is boundly generated and B is finite. Now this linear group turns out to be realizable as a red product. Gamma is isomorphic to copy of Z by Z. No, this is a symbol of Rath product. So I think it's like means that one takes um, this sum of a times a as many times as the cardinality of b and then b acts on this this group and you take the um, semi direct product of the corresponding group And uh, this realization, this isomorphism can be viewed um, observing that the those acts on A with two orbits. I mean, the, the monomials of, well, not really two orbits, so, but uh, X on A and uh, monomial preserving the parity of the monomials. can view the ring of Laurent polynomial as the direct sum of um, subgroup of monomial of uh, generated by monomial of even degree and monomial of odd degree. And so we obtain two copies of that. And this torus, which is isomorphic to that, acts on this. Now, uh, so the fact that gamma is not boundly generated is also a corollary of Nikolov Suri um, result. I'd like to give a, a sketch of, a, of an explicit uh, 
just of the non boundary generation of the of this specific group not I don't prove the general theorems Eber Siegel or Nikolov Turi. So uh, So first of all, it is generated by these three matrices. As I said, P and U give rise to um, even uh, monomial. And if I add this new matrix P, Using P and V, I can obtain on the right upper corner a odd degree uh, polynomial. So we can define the, the width of a number of a, an element A, where A is a Laurent polynomial, as the number. Yes? Yeah, it is a corollary of, of, of both theorem. So if you know this, the proof of that theorem, you can skip, the, skip this one. But if one doesn't know, maybe dedicate a. Um, yes. So uh, this is the number of non-zero terms. In the in the polynomial A, and then I define this set A sub n is the set of elements A having width most n. This is not a subgroup but it's stable by multiplication by uh, integers. And B and N equals A N divided by X to the M minus one. So this is a subset of, of the field of rational functions. So it means take all the elements of A N and divide by this polynomial. It's easy to see that A and one plus A and two contain the A one two and the same for the product. So we take products of elements there. Yeah. And also we have By sum to uh, B and N, so B and one and two, I go inside another B and N where M is um, is the product and N is um, M one plus one and two plus M two plus one. And one. This is proved just by uh, taking a common denominator. So so we observe that x to the m one minus one and x to the m two minus one both divides. One 
Now, let us consider the set N, which is a set of, of unipotent matrices, where um, A belongs to the intersection of B and N with And it turns out that um, UMN is normalized by T. This follows from the fact that uh, XI A N is always A N. So X i B and N is always equal to B and N. Because multiplying by a monomial does not increase the number of terms. Now the crucial step is is the following lemma. For every gamma, there exists an N such that cyclic group generated by gamma is, uh, is contained the product of the torus by a certainly certain U and N. And one can write gamma as Where gamma as t to the i by matrix, where i is an integer, and a is t k. Then if uh, i equals zero, then it's clear the, the subgroup generated by gamma has just uh, element of the form of n a, on, uh, well, n is an integer. And as I said, um, all these set, although they are not groups, they are stable by multiplication by an integer. So that's easy. Otherwise, i is different from zero. And the main point is that gamma is conjugate to t to the i in that in this case, because the diagonal, we have uh, distinct uh, eigenvalues. So gamma is of the form beta to the minus one, t to the i beta. And where beta can be taken to be this matrix, and B has an explicit form, of, of course, in terms of A. If I don't go wrong, it's that one. So raising to, to the power, we obtain gamma D equals the minus one T I D beta. And so it is TID multiplied by a certain matrix. And it turns out that CD is calculated A X to the I, one minus X to the minus two ID divided by X to two I minus one. And so uh, CD belongs to and so um, so this matrix belongs to D um, MN well M is uh, this one true I or 
Well, if I is negative, I can, can put two I on the numerator. And uh, N is, uh, is twice the width of A, because yeah, the worst case is that the number of terms double. And this independently of D. So we obtain that this belongs to D. For every D. And now by induction, we can prove that by induction, every BG set One gamma n is contained in a set of, of set four, and the the main point is that uh, main point to to apply induction is is that the um, umn is stable by conjugation by t, so that basically you can change the order up to T. And then uh, the end of the proof is, is that it suffice to, to prove that for every MN, it's not true that A is contained in, uh, in some B and N. And here there is uh, an explicit example. The polynomial f of x is one plus x to the n plus one plus x to the uh, twice n plus one plus x to the n multiplied by n plus one. This does not belong B and N, because if you multiply there is no cancellation. And so the number of terms is, is twice so that, so it's larger than that. So, um, for today, I think I'll stop here and thank you for your kind attention. It's for the speaker. SPN1 BG. In SP? In one. Oh, one. In one, in. The symplectic group. Let this in the symplectic group. Yes, yes. And you want to know whether it's BG. It's BG. Um, no, I don't, I don't think it is. Um, N1. Okay, do you have any other questions? Can take the x two. Uh, you could take the x to be. You could specialize x equal to half. It still looks not boundedly ah. generated. So in, in inside Q, 
Inside Q, yeah. Inside Q. Yeah. Is that from this Piper theorem? I don't, I don't see why. Because you know the subgroup is not finitely generated. Z half. Ah oh, yes, one. yes, but it. Yes, I think you are right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Because um, here the ring would, would be A would be Z one half. Yes. 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 You're right. Okay, there's a question here. Is, is there a, a non a BG group, which is a discrete subgroup of GL and R? A non BG group? Uh, non B, uh, yeah, non, non, B, non, non BG group. I mean, a non a infinite rank and uh, is a discrete subgroup of SL and R, say. I, 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 I know. Well, I, I this one I is, said that. Uh, sorry. For, for instance, SL two is not boundary generated. So. Ah, no, 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 uh, solvable. Ah, solvable. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes. Solvable and discrete. In. Uh... Sorry. So these examples are always not uh, discrete. Thank you. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah. It's a big question. Okay, any other questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.